You ready? Okay, I'd like to welcome everyone to the uh, April 2nd, 2018 meeting uh, for the town of Monroe. Your exits are behind you. There's two of them. There's one out to our left, your right. And if we could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If everyone could please remain standing. Uh, I, we would like to have a moment of silence for those first responders uh, who recently passed away, uh, who were serving in our military. Uh, and the gentleman who was on the uh, FDNY uh, in Manhattan. Thank you. Okay. To, to all those students who are here, uh, it, it's been our habit to uh, you know, allow you to leave after an hour unless you're really entertained by Councilman McGinn and Councilman Scancarello. <laughs> so uh, you can leave at, at 8.30. And if you need anything signed, just come up uh, uh, Two hours later. You, you know, uh, now or you know, after, if, if you haven't had your paper signed. So first item on the agenda is the continuation of the public hearing notice for proposed local law number four of 2018. Uh, Council. Thank you, Supervisor. This is a continuation of the hearing from the last meeting, and this is a proposed amendment to repeal and replace Chapter 35 of the Town Code to expand regulations concerning peddling and solicitation in the town. So, and the board members have any comments, or anyone from the public wants to speak, um, we can open the continuation and allow anybody that's interested to come up. Anyone that wants to speak? No? Okay. Uh, Have the board members had an opportunity to review the chapter, or do you wish to continue it to take some more time until the next meeting? Um, I'm, I'm fine with it. Okay. Everybody else? But good. I'm I mean, one vote. Okay. Mr. McGinn. Yeah. <coughs> you you can. Yeah, I mean, um, we've had it out here. This would be the second uh, the second public hearing on it. Uh, we haven't gotten a whole lot of feedback from the public on it. So, uh, uh, you know, we, we as a board collectively had asked for, for revisions on law because we knew there were there was a, certainly a need for it or a potential need for it. So uh, based on that and, and without further comment from the public or any members from the board, I'd, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, we adopt uh, we adopt local law. Right. For we'll we'll need to move to close the public oh. hearing first. Right. I'll make nope. a motion to uh, move to close the public hearing. Did you want to say something? No. I'll second that. Okay, Bingham, aye. Cool. Aye. I was had to ask for discussion first. We did. So. Oh, it's just to close the meeting. Though. Oh, just closing the meeting. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry. I know I jumped the gun. Cardone, aye. Skankarello, aye. McGinn, aye. Okay. Now and we need a motion to <coughs> approve local law number four of 2018. I'll make that motion. We adopt uh, local law four of uh, 2018. And I will second that. Okay. Seconded by Councilman Skankarello. Any other discussion? Uh, call the question. Councilwoman. Bing Bingham, aye. Colon, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. McGinn, aye. Okay, so moved. Okay, next item. Uh, we need to set a public hearing for proposed local law number five of 2018. That is a uh, law regarding the planning board uh, attendance. Has everyone had a chance to review it? I'm talking about that. Yeah, I reviewed it and I made one correction, which council has already 
um, uh, corrected. Okay, what was, oh, was that the ORs? The, law, the ORs point, or the yeah. OVs? Okay. Yeah, the, the law, um, all you're going to be doing now is setting the public hearing, and then at the public hearing we would discuss the substantive content. But both laws, this one and the next motion, concern attendance requirements for the planning and zoning boards, respectively. So we're just going to set the public hearing, then we'll redistribute the law to the board. It'll be posted on the website if it's not there already. And then we'll have the public hearing at the, uh, presumably the next meeting. Um, is that we're putting this on? For yeah, I've got to make a motion for the 16th then. Or April 16th? at 7.30. Yes. All right, so I'd like to make a motion that we uh, hold a public hearing for the proposed local law number five, uh, which is the uh, deals with attendance for members of the uh, Planning Board on Monday, the uh, April 16th at 7.30. I'll second. Seconded by Councilman Colon. Any other discussion? Call the question. Bingham, aye. Colon, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarillo, aye. McGinn, aye. Okay, so moved. Next, uh, set the public hearing for proposed local law number six of 2018, which is similar to the uh, previous one, uh, although it's regarding the uh, zoning board of appeals. So and alternate members. I'll and make a motion that we set and the alternate members of the zoning board of appeals. Uh, make a motion that we uh, set a public hearing also for the 16th of April at 7:30, or soon after the uh, the other public hearing. For local law six. For local law six. I'll second that. Seconded by Councilman Colon. Any other discussion? Uh, call the question. Bingham, aye. Colon, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarillo, aye. Begin, aye. Okay, so moved. Okay, next uh, is the public hearing for the Community Development Block Grant. Uh, I understand we have some people from Water District 12 here. No? no, I don't see them. <laughs> they said they were going to come, but oh, one. One, one, one is raising one her person. hand. Did, okay. Did you want to come up and speak, or it's up? It's optional. It's up to you. It's optional. <laughs> don't don't feel pressured. But you better no. I mean no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you don't have to. It's there's two, no? and I All thought right. there was going to be a third one here, but All I right. don't see him. Okay. So yeah, they are in attendance. But they are in attendance and they are watching, so they <coughs> definitely uh, still quite quite a bit of interest. To us. Mary, did you want to just give a brief overview? Um, basically, we're trying to go to the community development block grants um, to see if we qualify. There are income limits, but if it's possible, we're going to try to get some money to help pay for the infrastructure improvements that are needed there. Um, the most you can get in one year. Councilwoman, I'm sorry to interrupt. We we need to move to open the public hearing on this. Okay, I'll make a motion to open the public hearing on this. Second. Call a question. Bingham, aye. Cologne, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. Again, aye. Okay. And we could just consider Ms. Councilwoman Bingham's comments so far as part of the record. Okay. Okay. So, uh, as I was saying, we are trying to see if Water District 12 could qualify um, to get some monies the most you can get in one year I believe is 125,000 and you can go for three years but then you wouldn't be able to apply during those that term for any additional funding uh, so um, that's a possibility that maybe we could break up the project into smaller increments and uh, we could see if it, it works but there are income limits and we'll have to see if the uh, district qualifies just so everyone is aware, the community development block grants are based on a point system that's determined by an, a, uh, the uh, county and an advisory committee. Uh, the $375,000 that you can apply for, which would uh, exclude you for three years, uh, essentially does not begin until the first year that you get, yeah, the first year after you get the grant. So it would be three years. Uh, following that grant. The $125,000 uh, from what uh, other supervisors and people who have applied have told me is probably the best way to go with, with, with uh, any time you apply uh, because you could get tied up with the 375 if your project has delays and whatnot. So 
whether we uh, you know applied for uh, 100 or 125 for the water district 12 project uh, that would be the in the best interest of what uh, everyone else has uh, informed me so uh, that's that's basically it we actually have a meeting uh, with the director of the CDBG next Tuesday uh, in the morning so I, I will be attending that uh, with my secretary and if Mary Ellen wants to join us or mm -hmm. any other council uh, member uh, one can go obviously uh, that, that would be fine I'll let you know the exact time I believe it's at 10 o'clock uh, so th what they do is they'll help you prepare the grant paperwork and uh, guide you along so that you're able to obtain as many points as is needed to secure the grant okay <clears throat> anyone else want to speak on that hi Lorraine Loning Village of Monroe um, I'd like to propose uh, that we do something to to develop some recreation in the town. Um, previously, uh, I've talked to other boards about this, but now I know I have a park happy crowd, so that's always good. Um, the fields at Mombasha, they're not lit. Um, that really cuts down on the amount of time that people can use them. Uh, one of my kids plays soccer down in Suffern, and he, go he practices till 10 o'clock at night, and then after that, there's adult men who who the hell knows what time they go to, but it seems to me that if we had some lights, we'd be able to expand recreation options in this town. Uh, I'd also be interested in uh, maybe putting some trails out by Faber Farm. Uh, and just uh, and while we're talking about Mombasha, that soccer field, that's for, for wee children, little kids. It's not for, for big kids. Once you're around 10, it's no bueno. So uh, if there's something you can do to make that field more um, inclusive of older kids and grown-ups that would be rocking as well so um like i said if we could just look at ways to improve recreation around here that would be great thanks thank you thank you thank you emory morris so <clears throat> i'm also here tonight to look for a piece of the pie and um, <clears throat> piggybacking on what Lorraine said, um, the lighting sounds like it would be a great idea up there. I'd also like to see some cameras, too. Um, and as far as the soccer field, um, a larger kids play on it. It's not a small field. We have travel teams that, that use it. So um, It's 13 and 14 years yeah, old, I it think. Is. Yeah. So it may have at one point been used for the little kids. And there are some little nets there that um, the town had purchased. but. Uh, they don't use them. They don't use them for no, practice. No, they, they, they divide so, that field in half at yeah. times for the younger for, kids. For yeah. the younger kids. Yeah, um, I think it's been used up to U18, actually, back when... It, it may, involved. yeah. I just know that yeah. the applicants that, I, that I'm working <coughs> with now, um, I believe the age was up to 14 yeah. or 15. So... Um, it means a lot of loss. You know, the, the bigger the kids, the more of those, you know, you go through balls over those fences. Like, oh, uh, well, yeah, I'm crazy, sure we do. You know? <laughs> so... But that yeah you're right because that's what happens is the older the kids the more I you know I must have had 20 balls go missing in those woods over there on the far end you know? right right so anyway didn't mean to interrupt you go no ahead, no please. no that's okay so you know I'd also like to point out that um, this building and the town of Monroe was a recipient of um, a community development grant 20 years ago so we completed the project I say we but I had come on after the project was completed. Um, so in June, I believe, or May or June, we'll have our 20th anniversary, and this is a direct um, result of a community block grant. So I'm pretty happy to, you know, this is something that we sit in, we've used for, for the last 20 years. In addition, the, the deck and the downstairs was used at different times um, after the initial grant. Um, what I'm looking for is um, I'd like some automatic door openers. There was actually three things I was looking for, but considering that the water district um, is applying, I'm not going to do the third one. I'm just going to ask for the w number one and number two. Um, so my number one would be, as I say, automatic door openers. I have four doors that I would like to, um, to have these 
um, apparatus is applied to the front door for sure um, the ladies and men's bathroom up here and then downstairs the um, the entrance door in the basement um, with when you, each of when you say the front door we're talking about the not the main entrance door the second actually entrance. the main entrance door oh the main entrance yeah because the second one I can prop I can open prop open I, I can you know do something with that but the main entrance door because when someone comes in they really would like to be able to come in on their own um, within the last uh, I think it was 18 months 15 months we had corrected the um, entrance that was coming in and the thought was to have the the door openers and I've asked for this in the past before um, but um, for various reasons something else pops up I only have so much money in my budget um, so I, I really think now is time that we consider adding them the plus to this is that um, the technology has changed considerably some you know from when I first looked at it so um, a lot um, they use wireless um, the push buttons can be wireless so before where I was going to have it wired that was a, an additional cost so now it looks like that I can um, get an apparatus that can be wireless uh, and push the door out at the front door front door is glass the two um, bathroom doors are wood and the downstairs door is metal so if I was going to do something on the downstairs door if, if this worked and we had permission um, I would want to replace that door too. That door has been um, fixed and fixed and fixed many times over the year. It rusted, and then we put bolts in it to keep it together. I think, John, you remember. So um, each one of the doors comes with a different and unique situation on them. So um, the amount would be um, 12400 Um and again, it would if, if it turns out that I, I didn't get it for all of it or with the with the point system, my number one and number two would be the, the front door and then the basement door. We may have to change some things in the men's room if I did a, an, an automatic door because when you walk in, when you do an automatic door, you set it so that it opens and then it closes after a specified time that you, you and you know, we may have to put up a, a wall there or something because we wouldn't want that open. In the men's room. The ladies' room, I don't think we would have a problem with. The way that the bathrooms are configured. So um, that would be the one item. The other item um, would be the HVAC system up here. We have two HVAC systems in the building. Um, the one up here is 20 years old. The one downstairs is uh, roughly 15 years old. Um, I do have it serviced every spring and fall. And the last two times that he came, he said, you know, you're really, really on borrowed time. And you've been really lucky, considering h how old they are. Um, the usage is, um, well, up until recently, s sometimes this um, air conditioning or heat comes on at 8 a.m. And then it doesn't go off. Um, I mean, now I think it gets off a little earlier, maybe 10 o'clock, 10.30. But prior months, it would be 1 in, one in the morning. So, it, you know, it's almost running continuously 24 hours or, or 20 hours. Um, so rather than being reactive, um, if and when something were to happen, I'd rather be proactive and have it in the works. And if, if this doesn't come to fruition for, um, I don't know exactly when they, when they apply it, but if this could be in the works so that it, would, it could get fixed, that it could get replaced, not fixed, replaced, that would be terrific rather than something happening and then I don't have air or heat here and then I'm you know we're, we're tr rushing to get something or um, you know we may be closed and that would obviously impede what goes on here as well and every other board that we have here so Do you have a ballpark on that 40 uh, um, almost as high but he said 33 to 35 mm, so so maybe you know by the if you have to add other things in that they didn't consider but it's about I guess it would be rather be 20 each, each floor. Well, I, I'm looking for just the top floor. I mean, he said we we're okay for the bottom floor, but All he right. said the top floor is really, this 40. floor is really <laughs> needs to be done. So if you, if you had to prioritize those two, what order would you put them in? Well, 
Uh, you don't have to tell me yeah. tonight, but w we we have to know I guess when I we make the application. Right. So I, I guess it would be um, I guess it would be the HVAC system because I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to be with. Without you wouldn't want to have doors without <laughs> really central air I would AC. really <laughs> like to have the automatic. I mean, at least for the front door. Now I've backed that out, haven't I? Now, but I really the front door and the basement door. It's so important um, that people can come here and feel like they can get in the building without assistance. You know, and 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 I I think um, we should provide that. Hey, for the doors, are there any other possible avenues for uh, uh, funding for grants? Yeah, Fifty-two. Uh, Office for the Aged, anything like that? that I don't know of anything like that. Did, I, did you say something? A doorman. A doorman. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought I heard something. Um, no, I, I don't know of any um, right, just, coming just up to the Aged. Just wondering if there was something else out there to, you know. Yeah. As I say, you know, uh, it, it, I have discussed it at budget sessions over the last few years. Um, and then something something else, you know, more important comes along. And, and just like you're, you're asking me, about the HVAC, I do, you know, that's important. Um, I, I, I jump up and I open the door. I don't mind doing it. We hold them open when the dial of bus comes. Sometimes the drivers help. Everyone gets everybody in, but it really would be, um, it really is the right thing to do. So I hope, you know, I hope when we get the money, when we figure out how much, if I had to scale it down, I could scale it down. But. Um, the the prices are good. It's just a matter of how many doors to do here. Okay. Okay. I just want to I want to read a letter today, which I was emailed to me at two fifteen. Uh, it says, "Dear Supervisor Cardone, I was planning to attend tonight's meeting. However, I am unable to do so. I would appreciate it if you would read this email during the meeting. We have we have been members of the Monroe Senior Center for well over ten years. We utilize all activities." at the center, including the exercise classes, clubs, bingo, and day trips away from the building. We are very happy to have a senior center with a variety of activities for everyone, those that are able-bodied and those that pref prefer quiet activities. We're extremely fortunate to have Anne-Marie Morris as our director. Taking care of the center is not an easy task, yet she always goes above and beyond her responsibilities. The other purpose of our letter, aside from thanking the town for supporting the center, is the possible purchase of automatic door openers. We witnessed Anne Marie, like you just said, jumping up to help seniors that have mobility issues and believe this purchase would be a well-intended asset to the building. We noticed last year that the new cement entrance was corrected so that those seniors with walkers and wheelchairs would have easier access through the front doors. Although at the present time we don't have mobility ability issues ourselves we are empathetic to our friends that do and hope that the town board can consider this expenditure no one knows what the fu future holds f for any of us sincerely yours elaine jefferson angie owen gail mcmanus and barbara lewis so wow yeah. all right i didn't know that they uh we were discussing it last week as a matter of fact I, when i'm I gonna assume this up. is from elaine because the email is eaj5 okay so All those right. are her initials, Elaine Jefferson. So, okay. thank, <coughs> you. thank you. Thank you. And kudos to you, to your efforts. Thank you. Everybody. Absolutely. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Anyone else want to speak? I'm sorry, Mary. Did you have a question? No, I just pulled it down. Oh, okay. So just, uh, I have a quick question. So are we going to have uh, town engineers going to prepare this? This grant is that how we're going about this? Uh, we we can work with the town engineer, uh, although those soft costs are not put into the grant only on specific ones. Uh, but as as far as us putting the application together, as long as it's not complicated like the water district, the water which is which we wrote a preliminary letter to the. Uh, right. uh, to the CDBG uh, committee, uh, that's fine. Uh, Mary Ellen and I, you know, we were at the class, so I, I think that we can get through it for the most part uh, on right. the issues that Amory has, but we definitely need uh, MHE's help and guidance with regard to Mary's. And right. and all items will be uh, inserted into the, uh, into the package, so. 
I just want to make sure we have our best. Uh, oh, absolutely. To succeed with this grant. And uh, correct me if I'm <coughs> correct here. Uh, Mike Weeks is currently working on this with you, right? That's my understanding. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything else? No. Okay. Uh, now, can we uh, get a motion to close that public hearing? Yes, you can. Let's you don't need to continue it, right? You don't have to continue it, no. No. Grant-wise, we shouldn't continue. Yeah. Grant-wise, for the application, we shouldn't continue. We need to close it tonight. We're yeah. on a very and short time frame. They're due on April 27th, I think. I'll make a motion we close the public hearing on this. I'd like to second. Second. Any other discussion? Call the question. Bingham, aye. Colon, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarillo, aye. Begin, aye. Okay, so moved. Uh, next item up is the approval of minutes of February 5th, March 5th, and March 19th. 19th is pulled. Okay. So we have, uh, do we get a motion for the approval of the February 5th, 2018 minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the February 5th minutes. Second. Any other changes or discussion? Okay, so moved. Uh, call the question. Bingham, aye. Colon, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. McGinn, aye. Okay. Uh, we need a motion for the, I'll make a motion for the March 5th, 2018 minutes. Approve I'd like them. To, to second that motion. Yeah, second by Mary. No, I made no, the motion. Okay. Any other discussion or changes? Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cologne, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. Okay. Okay, so moved. Supervisor Cardone, if I may take a minute. Um, January 22nd minutes were, there was a motion to approve them and there was never a second. So I'm going to put that on the next meeting and put those minutes in the board's boxes if you can review them again so we can officially um, approve them. Also, so the public knows, we had a little glitch. Um, Valerie has worked very hard on putting the video to the minutes, so now you can see it. Um, then we had the glitch of we thought we could do something with YouTube, and we found out we couldn't. So it was down for a little while. It is back up, so you can view it. I do ask the public so you understand, minutes are not going to be found under the document center. And going forward they are going to be under board docs and hopefully this summer I'll have a summer intern yeah. from the high school we're going to take the archive minutes and also move them over to board docs the only thing with the archive minutes there will be no video clips for them we're just going to do going forward with the video clips so we are, we're <coughs> we're getting there we've had some minor glitches but we are moving along and Valerie has put everywhere we can think of a little step-by-step -step on how you can find things through board docs. And we will start building our library of policies and, and different <coughs> documents under board docs. So we are moving forward on. Okay, thank you. Uh, that being said, uh, we have our attorney here, uh, our planning board attorney, and he always, uh, I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session to discuss uh, legal litigation and uh, some uh, personnel issue. I'll second that motion. Any discussion? Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cologne, aye. Cardone, aye. Skankerill, aye. McGinn, aye. Okay. Uh, Ready? No. And then it's inside. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to come uh, out of executive session and back into our regular meeting. I'll second it. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cologne, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. McGinn, aye. Okay. So moved. Okay. Uh, first item up is I'd like to make a motion to authorize town council to work with village council uh, regarding the Greenfield property case. That's I'll a second it for discussion. Any other discussion? Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cologne, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarillo, aye. McGinn, aye. Okay. Uh, next, we have uh, 
we need a motion to appoint the uh, altern alternate member of the ZBA. Yeah, I'd like to nominate Pete Lewis. Uh, I had a chance, I, and actually all the board members, I believe, had a chance to interview him uh, for something different, but uh, his qualifications are very good for the ZBA. So I make a motion to appoint Pete Lewis as the alternate member for the ZBA. I'll second that. Okay, any other discussion? Call the question. Bingham, I. Cologne, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. McGinn, aye. Okay. Next up, uh, appointment of judge uh, clerk to the town justice uh, of Judge uh, Judge Milligram, actually specifically. I'll make that motion. Motion by who you who you who you appointing? Uh, that would be Teresa. Teresa Doyle. Doyle. Yep. Okay. It's a full time. Full time. I'll second that. Do we have to set the salary? Uh, you second it for discussion. Do you have to set the salary, uh, Mr. Nugent? Well, we have one, correct? Yes. Yeah, we can state the salary. Okay. So it's salary's twenty nine nine. Twenty nine nine. Twenty nine nine. Salary is twenty nine nine. Okay. And, and that's that a full time appointment, just full time. Thank you. Exempt. Uh, and that was that will be helpful in saving overtime. Judge Milligram? Yes. We yes? Will definitely will. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Supervisor Cardone, could I have who made the motion? Who second again? Cologne made the motion. McGinn's, uh, McGinn second, right? Yes. Thank uh, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, did you second? Discussion. Yeah. He did. He did. Okay. Yeah. Did. Supervisor, just so it's on the record, that's position of clerk to the town justice, exempt position in civil service. Correct. Good job, Mr. Nugent. Thank Very you. Well. <laughs> okay, call the question. Bingham, aye. Cologne, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. McGinn, aye. Okay. So moved. Uh, next item on the agenda uh, is a possible motion to execute the option to purchase the Ed Skyam building. Uh, you, you have all been presented with the costs associated with it. Uh, the initial purchase price, I'll, I'll, I'll be brief with this. There are some copies out there. Uh, first off, I, I want to say that you know this is, this is something that will be beneficial for the town from uh, multiple standpoints. First one being consolidation of our offices. Uh, we essentially will have the court at J.D. Hall uh, and the administrative offices for the court move over to uh, what would be the uh, new town uh, hall building. The, there will be uh, cost savings associated with that. Uh, we will have some of the offices move from downstairs to upstairs. Uh, the historic society, which is presently in this building downstairs, essentially what's in, in kind of a garage, will also uh, move over. Uh, and, and most likely, likely occupy some of the offices uh, in the back portion uh, right now, what is known as the finance offices. The uh, cost associated with the purchase of the building is $2,800,000. Uh, now, presently, I had inserted $261,000 in credits, which I, I know... Uh, Mr. Nugent, you had said it was 216, which is 2024. 20, Hold on. Just so I'm right here on the numbers. Uh, it was 24 months times 9, which is $216,000. Now, I had, I had added into those credits December, January, February, March, and April, which was an additional 45, but... That was on the extension, but was that negotiable? Or was if, that if we, as the town, extend before May 1st, then the credit is negotiable. Okay. If we went beyond that, then it would be the 216. Okay. So when you say extend, we're talking about approving the option to purchase. 
Yeah, in other words, if we approve the option to purchase by May 1st, then right. we, we can negotiate that credit. Okay. All right. So essentially it would bring the purchase price down to uh, $2,539,000. Uh, uh, when you add in all costs associated with uh, renovations, work, site improvements, uh, parking lot improvements, uh, mm -hmm. possible pur purchase of some furniture, state grant money, security system, upgrading the telephone uh, and the IT system there. There's a difference in the insurance, which essentially is the insurance for that building, less the insurance that we currently currently play for J pay for J.D. Hall and 11 Stage Road. Uh, the moving expenses for the courts, assigned for town hall, uh, utility costs, which would be the new building less J.D. Hall. I didn't even include 11 Stage Road in that. Uh, calculation because it's so minimal uh, and then some miscellaneous cost it would bring the purchase price to 3.227 roughly a uh, million at a square foot for the building the total price is 146 dollars per square foot the building currently has 21,987 thousand square feet 16,874 of which is furnished, which if you factored out the cost of the building for the total square foot that has finished, it brings it up to $191,000. <clears> Excuse me, some items that have not been included there are the sale, the possible sale of the Old Town Hall, the rental uh, or possible sale of JD Hall, uh, which are, so to speak, incomes, uh, personnel costs, which uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure which we would have any associated with it, additional right now. And then there's also an income which would come from the, uh, the hall rental, which would be the, the meeting hall, similar to this, only it's probably three times the size of this. Uh, so that would, that would be mainly deductions I think from that 3.227 uh, million price uh, if you if you look at the various halls that have uh, town halls or uh, village and town halls uh, I've spoken to a number of supervisors uh, everyone has said uh, this seems like a no-brainer for us uh, especially factoring in the cost per square foot uh, what it would be going forward so uh, I, I feel it's in the best interest of the town and the taxpayers that we we move forward with the option to purchase this uh, because our alternative would be to go back to old town hall stay where we are and pay rent lose the possible uh, costs associated with what we've been paying for rent in the deduction off the purchase price of it uh, and I mean, there there are, there are there are other reasons as well, but uh, that would be that would be my personal recommendation. Anyone else care to comment? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, even in the last couple of years, in the last eight years, other towns have built uh, town halls, new town halls, and they've gone more than double the price of this completed. So I, th I think we're, we're coming in at... You're talking per square foot. Per square foot, but also for the total cost of the buildings, um, many places have gone up to six-plus million dollars. In fact, uh, and, and this is not a competition, but even with the new firehouse, that uh, what they had to build, of course, that's a bit more extensive, but it's still considerable cost when you're talking about a municipal building and bringing it up to code. Uh, 3.2 mil complete and we hope to keep it around that uh, hopefully maybe a little less is a considerable savings I think I, I feel it's a, uh, a good deal for the town when you look at the square footage cost uh, compared to again with sim similar uh, buildings are going for other municipalities um, you know my only again my only issue with it is is there are some uh, finished items that need to be addressed with the owners of the, the 
the building that that I think uh, should go towards reducing that cost because there are again the parking lot and things that they would have uh, normally finished as part of their uh, to get their CFO I would assume from the village which yes. which um, so I think that's something going into it that we should really um, there are, about there, yeah, there are, there are also some deficiencies in, you know, what has been uh, constructed already. You know, one in particular is the oh, actual, slab. well, the slab, but one that, you know, was, was really, I didn't understand how it was done, was the railing height on the deck. Uh, I, I, I believe it's 10 inches below what the zoning calls for. So our, our engineers have done uh, a study on everything, and uh, you know a lot of that site, those site improvements were incorporated into the little analysis that uh, that, that I had done. So, okay. the other thing I'd like to say is, um, or I have a question first: the income from rentals, room rental. Uh, you're, we're hoping that some of the the organizations that rent that facility now would carry over, and we could rent to them as well. Well. Here's it, they would be able to rent a room. Uh, our council has informed me that you know, the religious organizations cannot uh, rent it on a permanent basis like they have been. Like uh, initially, I guess back about eight months ago, the, the talk was that we would buy it and that's Kayim congregation would rent it back from us. But uh, am I correct, council, that we're not allowed to do that between because the separation of church and state? Well, I don't think you can rent it on a permanent basis like that, no. I mean, to rent right. it back if it's a town facility. For, for a day or so is one thing, is one thing right? Yeah, I mean, as with any town property, it's a matter of, you know, if you're going to rent something like that, you'd have to get fair market value. But um, I don't know that you can enter back into a permanent agreement because then no one else would have an opportunity to use the property. In right. theory, if something like that would have to go out to bid. Okay to get the best price you could if somebody else was interested in the same space. So I'm going to say it's not that you couldn't, but you couldn't choose to just say, we're going to rent it to you. You'd have to put it out there and say, we have this space available, and whoever wants to give the best price will rent it exclusively to you if that's what the board chose to do. Okay. <coughs> I actually have a question for the attorney. Similar to like American Legion halls, and I, mean, I believe that has like a commercial kitchen. Can it be rented out, like for, you know, functions where, you know? Yeah. The, the look, you can, no, 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 you know, lease or rent no, no, no. or otherwise let someone no. use town property no. so long as you're getting uh, a reasonable market, market value for it. In other words, no. or if there's some community organization that gives back. I mean, there are exceptions to that, yeah. but if it was just anybody and it was open for them to rent it, then it needs to be at at a fair market value rate. So, so if someone wanted to rent a safe for I don't know uh, an anniversary party, and you had you know we had the the rental contracts in, in place and, and all that. What about like alcohol use and things like that? Is well, that something? Well, those are all issues you'd have to deal with, and you know you might require somebody else to hold a license for that purpose, or like, like the people coming in. Like yeah, that. usually like the. The, the municipalities that do that normally have a private company as the ones running it. In other words, they lease the property and then they take care of all that because you don't want to get into the business of yeah. running the catering hall. So you would typically hire a company or the company itself would lease that property and then they do all the arranging and all of the you know catering work, if you will. And they just pay you as one company, one catering company that is paying you for the. Usually, it's a license agreement, not a lease, you could, yeah. because we don't ever want to. You know, if you lease, you technically would be Doesn't subject to, to referendum. But a license, you could do, um, you even on a right. yearly basis, have somebody run the catering hall, and that's done in other municipalities. Okay. I'm just thinking of ways to uh, potentially offset offset the right uh, because I know the facility is being rented now. Right. So I didn't know what, you know, if we can continue that, but we'd have to put it out like for a bid, but it could be done. Yeah, I think it could be done. And again, if you determine that, you know, the, the market value you're getting is fair and it's what it's worth, you could enter that lease. I'm not saying you have to go out and, and select everybody, but you cannot do it at, let's say, a discounted rent or something like that. It's going to have to be what a similar facility would be worth 
if they were going elsewhere, what you would collect for that square footage for that particular hall. Okay. And if they're willing to pay that, then you could choose to rent it to whatever group you want. Something to consider, I guess. It's good. Yeah, it's yeah. consideration. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so we need a motion to exercise the option to purchase at Skyam. I will. I'll, I'll make that motion. Yeah, I'll Supervisor, second. I do have a resolution. I, I don't know if you had a chance, but yes, um, I, you I, have I did. That there. Yep. And just uh, I say that only because this is not authorizing the the purchase at this point, but rather uh, authorizing the supervisor to provide written notification. <laughs> Um, that the town wishes to exercise the option and then authorizing the supervisor to enter into negotiations with the representatives of the Monroe Woodbury Jewish Community Center concerning that credit towards the purchase of the premise. This way, um, section four indicates that the final authorization would be subject to another resolution of the board once we have the details and, and you've got those numbers more accurate, you would authorize the uh, purchase. The other question is going to be financing. If we're going out, for example, with a bond of more than five years, then that will be subject to permissive, permissive referendum. referendum. Otherwise, if it was planned to be paid before that, there's no referendum required to, to purchase property. It would only be the financing that would result in that referendum. Okay. But we don't need to decide that tonight. I'm just having that discussion, and that's why I indicated there will be another resolution um, to authorize the final purchase once we've agreed on the numbers. Okay. So I'll make that motion. <coughs> I'll second it. Any other discussion? No? Call the question. Bingham, aye. Colon, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. McGinn, aye. Okay, so move. Next item is the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals alternate member appointment. No, we did that already. That okay. was Pete Lewis. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We did that. My mistake. Uh, 4.3, uh, renaming of TMAC. Did we do that last time? No. We had a public hearing in the grill. The public hearing for Public it. hearing was last meeting. Then we had that girl talk about it. Right. Yes. Monroe Theater. Yep. Mm -hmm. So does anybody have any preference here? It's an, it says Monroe Theater outside. I mean, that's, what's, that's, what, the uh, that's, what, it's, that's what the sign says. So I think it we should just go with the Monroe, you know, the Monroe Theater. I think that's probably the, that's what the sign says. That's and that's what the consensus at the public hearing we yeah, had I think there. That's what Correct. most people yeah. felt would be appropriate, so. Okay, so we want to make a motion? I'll, I'll make a motion that we rename it the, uh, from TMAC to the Monroe Theater. I'll second. Any other discussion? Call the question. Oh, wait a second, I got just one, one quick thing with the attorney. So we're, we're currently in a, a uh, an agreement an agreement with, with, with uh, Downing Cinemas to, to uh, pr provide projections and procure movies and stuff. Does that, uh, would we have to redo that contract or? No, unless there is some restriction on the name of the building, which I doubt there would be in that contract, um, you would just notify them that it's been renamed and okay. that all terms, you know, would still apply. Right. Basically, you substitute Monroe Theater for TMAC in okay. the contract. Okay. I have a ca um, Councilman McGinn, does that consultant also run the ads in the newspaper? Uh, no. We do that? Yeah. Okay. He does run ads in the theater, so we would have to change anything and and actually the ads for the movies in the paper so right. the town board to change that would yeah. have to be changed so does the town board oh, want right, to right. set an effective date then for that name change so that you have a little time to make notifications um, want to do june may, 1st may 1st may 1st yeah. okay want to add that into your motion yeah i make a, i'll, I'll uh, amend the motion that we uh, rename the TMAC, the Monroe Theater, effective uh, May 1st. Okay. Second? Who Second, Colon. by Council McCallone. Uh Any other discussion? Call the question. Bingham, aye. Colon, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. McGinn, aye. Okay. 
Monroe Theater ticket and concession stand pricing. I know it was discussed last meeting. Uh, do we want to table this till next meeting on the 16th, or do you want to? I think we should table it to the next meeting. Okay. You want to make a motion to then? I'd like to make a motion that we table that to the uh, the Monroe Theater ticket and concession stand pricing to the April 16th meeting. Okay. I'll second that. Second it. Okay. So moved. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Cologne, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. McGinn, aye. Okay. Uh, item 4.5 on old business uh, zoning amendment. Over at You want me to say something? Yes, about I that? want you to say something. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I spoke to Max Stock today. If you recall, we had asked um, the planner was going to provide a recommendation on that. Um, he has not completed that yet, but he did indicate we would have it before our next meeting. So if we can continue that or move it to the next agenda, we should have his input. What was the name of the planner again? Max Stock. It's um, Nelson Pope and Voorhees is the name of the firm. And it's Max Stock, S T A C H, that is the planner. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. 4.6, Water District 8. Uh, I'll, I'll defer to Highway Superintendent Cherney, but be, before you speak, John, I just want to commend you and the men for the diligence you have shown in trying to rectify this situation in an extreme, extremely timely manner. So thank you for all the efforts there. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, it's uh, a, not a mess. I'm not going to say it's a mess. Right now we, we got it figured out to where there were some valves from the 162,000 gallon tank that was on top of the hill that were shut off. We have a feeling that due to those valves being shut off, the, the tank was not actually s feeding the water lines. So the village's tank was basically gravity fed down through our building, going up the hill as far as it could. When the folks on that hill there would turn on their water, they would get water pressure for 10 minutes while they're taking a shower. Once that water main starts to drain down, they lose their water pressure. When we found that out, we was basically investigating the situation. We shut one of the mains off closest to the top of the hill where the tank was. We started turning some valves and figured out there was some valves shut off. We had the fire hydrant that was closest to that tank opened up, and the pressure coming out of the fire hydrant naturally was significant because it was coming from the tank. When we did that, we basically, <laughs> the Board of Health stated we contaminated the system, <coughs> which we did not contaminate the system. If anything would have been contaminated, it would have only been to the fire hydrant. But once it hits that water main, they consider that whole system with the 140-something people that are on it to be contaminated, and then you got to go through all the proper testing and stuff like that. So we had to have a boil water advisory up there for a couple of weeks until we got that straightened out. Our next step. One, one sec. Somebody's car alarm's going off, yeah. so I don't know if anybody hit their keys. Go ahead, John. So our next step. <laughs> per the Board of Health. Did you stomach no, no. <laughs> Per the Board of Health. Our next step is to climb up to the top of that tank again chlorinate with approximately 35 gallons of chlorine drain it drain the tank <laughs> and then refill the tank up again and we should be in good shape to turn that tank on if uh, they decide not to do any bacterial test from the tank itself which I'm thinking they will but right now, now that's where we stand now that's the cost, 162,000 gallons of water right, and the cost of filling that tank we calculated about 17 1800 yeah right now ballpark. okay it's like ten ten dollars and eighty eight cents a thousand per thousand gallons that we pay the village of Monroe. Yeah. So one hundred sixty two thousand or something. Okay. You'd have to pay that, you know, hundred sixty two times or whatever. That's okay. where we stand right now with that tank. Uh, and also about the bubbler. That's uh, yeah. We have to actually. Uh, that that's going to be kind of an inexpensive fix, but there was supposed to be a bubbler yeah. hooked up to the tank itself. 
which Aiken was, was supposed to put that in a long time ago. Well, he didn't. Well, terrible <laughs> shot. It would keep it from freezing, but it would keep it from freezing. I remember that whole conversation of it. Going okay, so that's that's how long that goes back. And again, we don't know how long this tank was shut off. We have absolutely no clue. That goes back to 2010, that's 2011. A, that could be a possibility. We really are not sure. Well, yes. that's what we found out so far, and that's you know. That tank has been shut off that long. We don't know. It could have been a couple months. It could have been from January when they started having water issues again. Mm -hmm. It could have been when the tank but froze he, over. He, I was up there with him in January. He claimed he did not shut it off. Yeah. So. Hey, John, was it, is there a way that those valves were secured, like only yeah. someone with a key could get in there? Our next step, no, they are not. And our next step is going to have fence. to be fence that whole area in. The tank itself is fenced in, but we would have to extend that fence probably 50 feet, 100 feet, and 50 feet again. So I'm, I'm going to start getting prices on that as well. Are these people getting water? They still have water, but they're running out of the water pressure, you know. And I'm not really sure. I'm I'm 90 percent sure this is the problem. And, and Remember Rick we were talking about the valves because sure. there's four valves. You were saying? Yeah, there there there's a uh, well four. There's actually six valves up top by the tank. Okay. I don't have the schematic with me where you can see it, but it's basically a, it's almost like a U shape. Right. Okay. And they they designed that for the water when it's when it's being fed up the hill. To go through a gate a check valve the to go into the tank. Comes out here. Right, fill the tank up and then basically gravity feed down through the, no. the out of that, the left of that. So they're running out of pressure now. Yeah, but it's only fed by one line. So so your fill line and your your uh, same line. Your your return line is only one line. So you know, but there's only like thirty something pounds of head pressure there. Jimmy Edner had told us that's plenty plenty of pump pressure to get the water past that and, and not a problem. Okay. I, I guarantee you're going to see a, a huge difference once some tanks are, are feasible running and turned back on. I, I guarantee it. The only thing we've got to worry about now is the head pressure down at the bottom of the hill. Is that going to affect that? Any? I don't know. Okay. I don't have right. an answer for that one until we turn it on. Yeah, it's good news compared yeah, to know, what was. But we're, 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 we're making progress on that, and then we'll go to water just a crawl, and I'll explain to you that side of it as well. So. Yeah, because I'm sure okay. those people want their <laughs> pressure back. Yeah. I would think so, you know, and, and we want a tank that I, I'm not sure how much that tank was uh, used, w was purchased for, or, or you know, mm -hmm. but uh, we definitely want the tank to be utilized, right. and we're not sure why it wasn't, or how long it's been down. We really don't know. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, okay, 4.7. Uh, we need to reapprove uh, Nina Petito to the Conservation Commission Advisory Board. She uh, uh, did not uh, take her oath in the 30-day period that's required. So I, I'll make an approval. Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, approve Nina Petito to the Conservation Commission Advisory Board. I'll, I'll second it. Okay. Any other discussion? Call the question. All right. Bingham, aye. Cologne, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. Begin, aye. Okay, so moved. Uh, Full-time clerk to justice we did. So 5.2, Water District 12 control panel installation. Mary? Actually, John's probably going to do most of the talking about this one, and I'll okay. just jump in with one comment. Okay. Uh, basically, what we have up there is a bunch of wires and pumps and stuff like that that are in that old pump house. It's down in a pit. When the guys have to go down in a pit to change the pump out, which they burn out probably once every four months or so, all right, which is probably five, six hundred dollars every time we do that to replace that pump or actually get it fixed. And then you're down a pump. Anyway, it's, it's quite dangerous. Uh, we have a gentleman from Delfino Electric who has, is familiar with the system, uh, willing to actually install a new control box up there, which will in turn alternate both pumps running both of them pumps that are running up there are always clicking on and off on and off on and off so we're burning out the pumps quicker because basically your your tanks that your holding tanks aren't very big so it's just a matter of it, it's just a dilapidated system we all know this we all know that it needs major repairs eventually but for a temporary fix he can do this control panel for twenty six hundred dollars and ten twenty six ten 
Is that total parts and labor? That's uh, parts and labor. Yeah, I can pass this down to you guys. It's installation of new control box to replace existing due to hazardous conditions. Breaker box is to remain as is. Materials is going to be the control box itself, which is $1,000. I think he's going to do all the schematics and stuff like that at home. Uh, he said that's going to take him like a week to get that process completed. Uh, estimate for other materials, which would be about $250. Estimation of two men at eighty-five dollars an hour for eight hours is uh, thirteen sixty, and I will consider this, to be honest with you, kind of like an emergency to get this thing done ASAP. Yeah. Because Water District Twelve does have a control box that's been sitting in the shed since twenty sixteen, and John's going to do a little bit more investigating on that as to uh, what kind of warranties on that since it's been sitting around for a whole year. Uh, but this fix right now will definitely save the district some money and if we go with the community development block grants you are allowed to look back so I don't know how we want to phrase it but that's possible that this work can be part of the community development block grant application as well especially since it's considered an emergency at this time this is definitely an emergency it has to be done and this is something for the board to also consider is getting somebody on an RSV for, for at least an electrician at this point as, as soon as you can draft something up to where we can get somebody that we, we have there that's an electric, you know, especially somebody like this. Years ago, we used to have Wideway. Uh, he was our, our main guy. 24-7, this guy would come and, and fix any type of electrical issues we had, you know, so, so we need somebody like that as well. And unfortunately, uh, Richie's not around that much anymore, so... You know, that's something to consider for, okay. for the future as well. Hey, 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 John, I know you said the breaker box was not going to be replaced as part of this, correct? Or right. That, that doesn't need to be replaced, but he's going to run the wires to where it's going to be a little safer for everybody involved. Because right. you've got to go down in that pit every time you have a pump, right, yeah, I know. pump issue. I've been, yeah. I've been down, yeah. So, and, and that's not too safe. And you know. water and electricity don't mix. Well, yeah, water and electric never do mix very well. <laughs> because I think, anyway. I mean, I know that they've had problems with the, you know, the box. I'm just wondering if it's not worth it for us to also do that breaker box because I, I've seen them, you know, jump circuits, mm -hmm. do all sorts of craziness. I don't, I don't feel that he's very concerned about the breaker box at this point. I, right. th I think he feels with this new control box, that's going to solve most of your problems. All right. And if not, we could further move forward further if need be. Yeah. I mean, we could, you know, and then I could bring it back to you guys and say, listen, we've got, really got to do this too. But I don't think he's very concerned about that. All right. Get the control panel in there. That way, every other day, these pumps will alternate. This way, hopefully, it'll save the life on the pump, save us some money. Okay. Yeah, right. And That's keep moving forward until, you know, you get a permanent re uh, replacement and repair up there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, John. Uh, I guess you got to make a yeah. motion. So I'll make a motion that we approve uh, $2,610 for emergency repairs for the control panel. Uh, with Delfino Electric. Uh, Water District 12. Water, Water District, District 12. 12. I'll second it. Any other discussion? Call the question. Mary? Mary. Bingham, aye. Cologne, aye. Cardone, aye. Skankerola, aye. McGinn, aye. Yeah, you can get that to Mary. Long. Okay, so moved. Tony, I just have one more thing while we're on pumps. Uh, sure. We did have uh, Etzel's crew come down and take a look at the front shop in the highway garage. For the water separator issues. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. For the water separator issues. Yes. Uh, we dealt with oil separator. I apologize. O oil separator that we need in the front so shop so we can drain our wastewater into the sewer, basically. Right. He suggests that we get a survey at this time. I do not have a price for you. I, I wouldn't exceed fifteen hundred. I can't imagine, but. You know, okay. I, I gotta get approval to do the, uh, at least a survey to we. Where so we you want you want approval for f up to fifteen hundred dollars to do a survey? I think that suffice. Yeah. Okay, so I'll make a motion that uh, uh, the highway department superintendent be allowed to uh, hire a surveyor uh, for not more than fifteen hundred dollars uh, in order to survey the area for the oil separator. Second. Any other discussion? As long as you get three, three uh, yeah, Cologne, uh, three, you three can get bids. three bids, John. Three, three, three prices. Out of that, yeah. yeah. Okay. Call the question. Bingham I. Cologne I. Cardone I. Skankerola I. Begin I. Okay. So moved. 
Uh, 5.3 town records retrieval. Mary Ellen. Um, I just would like to bring the board up to date. I've been speaking to the supervisor, and I think it's overdue, long overdue. Uh, I'm requesting to bring the records back, put them in the um, downstairs of the town hall that we have right now. Um, I'm not going to unpack them. They're going to come in. They're going to be just brought in, and they're just here. Uh, the only thing is there is a security issue. Um, two departments and another department have access to that room, so I've been speaking to the supervisor about this. Um, as the records management officer for the town of Monroe, I am going to have that area secured. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it right now. I am meeting with the state archives tomorrow. Um, Valerie and myself are going to a class, and it actually is on setting up a records room. Um, so I am going to speak with Linda Bull, and I am going to request that she come down to the town of Monroe and meet with myself and the supervisor, show her the area, ask her some recommendations. This is a temporary fix to get our records back. This is not going to be the actual setup. I am working on something. I am not going to say anything right now what I'm working on. Um, it's in the early stages. Um, so I just want to get the records back because it's long, long overdue. So with the board's permission, I, I just like permission to be able to bring them back and work with the supervisor to make sure that they're secure. If we need to spend any money on it, any fencing, um, I would come to the board first and ask for approval. Okay. So. Anybody have any uh, suggestions? I have a question. Go ahead. Um, I, I thought originally we couldn't bring the records back because they were on like four foot pallets and the doors were three foot. Is that well, being they're addressed? Go or? Yeah, that's, they're going to come off the pallets and um, between the help of the company will move them back. They've asked what kind of, do we have a loading dock? And I started laughing. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I've kind of explained to them where our records are and kind of will be asking maybe for our building maintenance and maybe some help from the highway. We're actually going to have to bring in over a thousand boxes and some filing cabinets, quite a few filing cabinets. and. No, the pallets won't fit through the doors, but we have to get these records home, and that's we're just going to have a chain passing the boxes down the sidewalk. <laughs> that's kind of how I figured it out right now. We're dollies bringing them to certain points. Um, we figured out which is the best way to come through the front door, through my lobby, down the hall, down past finance, not to go through the assessor's department, and in that way. Um, but right now it's in i'm speaking with polygon on how we're going to get them back um they're just going to be stacked and um that's the plan for now just to get them back okay thank you hey mary ellen something maybe to uh explore i know you're going to be attending this uh you know record keep uh record securities class i mean uh and I'm, it, it may come up but there might be electronic ways to do it without doing actual fencing you know what i mean uh whether it's you know I, you know ifr or motion detectors or something like that that you can that could be set up there uh temporarily at least until you know yeah see the main <laughs> the main security issue is with not the outside but it's our own it's our own, our own people, people going yeah. in yeah okay uh, by my theory on the whole thing and this is how i want it set up in the backing from the board is the doors are locked. You need to get something, come over to the clerk's office. I'll be more than glad to walk down the hall, stand in there while you get your records out. Right. Okay, I, we have no problem with that. But there's court records, there's birth, death records, there's social security social numbers. Social security numbers. And I, I'm going to be honest with you, you guys have appointed me as this position. This is my call. I really don't even have to. I can just do what I want to do, and I don't want to be that way. I want the board to come in, give me their thoughts, give me their ideas, and their backing. 
because sometimes this is not easy for me to turn around and say, I'm sorry, s doors closed. Um, I, I can get some pushback from some departments. Uh, rightfully so. Everybody has their records and their access and they need things. But we need to get the records back. So I'm, I will work with everybody, make it as easy as possible. You want a record? Sure, we'll get it. We'll go down with you, stand there. You can go through everything you need to do. But I just can't let people just walk in that room no. nilly-willy. Somebody from my office has to be there. So. Well, they got to sign it out. Oh, no, no, no. Like, here's, the, here's the setup. In that room, Ben has filing cabinets because there's no room in his room. The assessor has filing cabinets, okay? They go in and they access records. Not every day. They're not going to be able to do that if we lock the whole thing down. And it, it, it has to be locked down. There's court records in there and all these personal records that, you know, other people don't have access to. So, um, you know, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. Years ago, I was accused of storing court records up in the, uh, up in the rafters in the highway garage. Mm -hmm. They weren't court records. <laughs> we recycled boxes. They were planning board records. So, um, you know, I've really, they got to get locked down. These are, these are records that people just, just can't walk in and say. They just can't. So I, it, it's not as terrible or as horrible as it may, I'm, it sounds that I'm going to be saying you can't yeah. go in there. I think if we just all work together, it'll, it'll work out fine. And it's, it's a temporary thing right now, I think, for maybe seven months. Okay. Well, okay. Long story short, it's going to be a heck of a lot quicker than what we have been going through. But yes. Yes. I understand that, and I'm sure everybody will work with you. Yeah, and, and let's face it, we're paying money to store these there now. And yeah, in, in Polygon, we're paying mo money. Okay. So there's, there's the All savings, right. too. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Marion. And just to clarify, Marion, those court records that were stored in the highway were all John Sherney's tickets. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, see. <laughs> what records? <laughs> okay. Uh, next item up is the town property employee form. Uh, this is a form for receipt and return of town of Monroe property. Uh, I think uh, council council had reviewed it, made a couple changes. My question is: before we approve this, uh, I, I'm assuming uh, Council Nugent that we will be allowed to have anyone who presently has equipment sign uh, fill us out and sign this as well, right? Not just for new employees. Yeah, you can do that or take sort of an inventory of your existing equipment to find out who has what and then document it on those forms. Okay. You just might indicate previously issued or somewhere on the form. Okay. And Mary Ellen, you'll be overseeing this? Yes. Okay. So I'd like a board approval on this form so then we can start the process and get that all taken care of. Okay, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the agreement for the receipt and return of town of Monroe property. I'll second that. Any other discussion? Call the question. Bingham, aye. Colon, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarillo, aye. Can I? Okay. Next item, public comment. First speaker. Is Lorraine Loney. Jason. Good evening, Jason Trowinski, private citizen, Village of Monroe. So, I'm speaking tonight on the matter of the proposed zoning amendment. I'm not entirely sure why the town board's even entertaining this. No. Uh, this is a flagrant usurpment of the Zoning Board of Appeals Authority. They have two primary purposes, and those are area variances and use variances. Uh, the way this has been proposed to me was it's one parcel owned by one entity asking for an amendment to their zoning district, and that is like Zoning Board of Appeals 101 use variance. So now I'm getting to get into more nitty gritty stuff. As of the adoption of this zoning code by the majority of this board, um, you knew that there was no daycare centers allowed in this. So I'm asking you guys to uphold that and enforce 
the current processes that we have in this town. Um, they are allowed for anyone else at home watching in neighborhood businesses and general business districts as a special use with planning board approval. Uh, so, if you choose to go forward with hearing on this amendment, it would be, it's my belief that you would be setting a very dangerous precedent. You would be now saying to any one person or developer or lawyer or whoever that if they want a use added to their zoning district, they could come to you. And what that would do is it would forego a lot of the water studies, the sewer studies, the traffic studies, and any number of environmental studies that are required for a ZBA variance to be granted and or denied. You would also be usurping the amount of public involvement that's required for each individual project, as also required by a ZBA use variance as well. So, now, if you still would like to continue this, I think you would have to convince the public that you're doing this out of your own free will and that it's for the betterment of the community, not because somebody is asking for an amendment. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Thank you. Board Brower. <coughs> Board Brower, private citizen. Uh, I do agree with what you just said. <laughs> I think we need to look into that a little further. And now, my pet peeve is I still would like to see the department, department head reports every month like they were for decades. I still believe in human back and forth, like with you guys. I don't like, I'm leery of when you go into cyberspace, I'm leery of that. I've seen, as I said, I've watched my wife every day delete, sit there for half an hour deleting these things. So I'd rather have department heads come up here and give us a summary, a monthly report in person, what they're doing with our tax dollars and get a feedback from the audience. That's how government should work and, and that government worked work quite well for a long time. It was a couple years ago it was removed and I think it was a big mistake. And I know on the Conservation Commission, we, we give us an opportunity to express what we're doing. Same when Mary, when uh, Anne Marie Morris gets up, she tells what she's doing, and so on and so forth. And it doesn't take that long. It, going back decades, those meetings didn't go two hours. They were done in an hour and a half at the most. So it's not a long, lengthy process, but it gives accountability. The taxpayers know where their money's going, and the servants know who they are serving. So if we could bring that back, I think it would be a plus. Thank you. Thank Mike you. Goldstein. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mike Goldstein, village and town of Monroe. I would like to commend the acting supervisor at last month's meeting, Rick Cologne, for his handling of public comment. He was very willing to allow people to speak, and he engaged with them. This, and there was no riffraff, no problems. Everything worked spectacularly reminded me of the way it used to be back in the dark ages. And I was hoping that this would continue so that we could have free di discourse back and forth between the people in the audience and members of our town board. Thank you. That's all I have signed up. <coughs> no one else? Okay. Anybody like to make a comment? Nope. Okay. Uh, we do have to go into executive session for one item. Uh, council would. Uh, it's possible litigation with regard to. Yeah, we'll also force. be discussing the uh, financial and/or credit history of a particular corporation. Okay. Okay. So. I'll make a motion that we go into executive session. I'll second that. Any other discussion? Call the question. Bingham I. Cologne I. Cardone I. Scangarillo I. Begin I. Okay. Thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 
Okay, uh, I'd like to make a motion to come out of executive session back into our regular session for our meeting on April 2nd, 2018. I'll second it. Second by Councilman McGinn. Cologne. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Councilman Cologne. Ooh, Boy, uh, call the question. Bingo, my. Uh, Councilman Cologne. Aye. <laughs> Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. McGinn, aye. Okay. Uh, we need a motion to authorize the supervisor to sign the SWIP. At the solar farm? At the solar farm. So I'd like to make that motion. I'll second it. Second. Any other discussion? Nope. Call the question. Bingham, aye. Colon, aye. Cardone, aye. Scancarello, aye. McGinn, aye. Okay, so moved. Any other business? No, just a motion to authorize town attorney to provide an updated opinion letter to Enforce Solar. I will make the motion for the town attorney to provide an updated opinion letter to Enforce Solar. I'll second that. Second. Any other discussion? Right, Call the question. Bingham, I. Cologne, I. Cardone, I. Scancarello, I. McGinn, I. Okay, so moved. Motion to adjourn at 9.50. I'll second that. Second. Call the question. Bingham, I. Cologne, I. Cardone, I. Scancarello, I. McGinn, I. Okay. Thank you very much. Hope everyone, everyone has a wonderful evening. Go Villanova.